All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for this awesome Business Central webinar. Thank you so much to John Ellis for hosting today. Uh, we're going to be talking about updating Business Central forecasts through Microsoft Teams Premium and Microsoft Fabric. Take it away, John. Thank you for that, Tony. Let me go ahead and share my screen, everyone, and we will go from there. And yes, it looks like we uh, everyone should be seeing the screen now. I've gotten the message yeah, that I'm sharing the screen. So what, of course, we are looking at is Business Central and more specifically the role center of uh, Business Central, of course, that we're all uh, familiar with uh, interchangeably, just call it the home page. Uh, the first thing I want to do before actually showing, if you want to think of it this way, the crux of the meeting <laughs> or this webinar is I want to first show what I plan on updating. Uh, for that, and from here in the role center, I'm going to go to the GL budgets, uh, general ledger budgets bookmark that I created for myself here, uh, bookmark shortcut, whatever you'd like to call it there. So I'm going to go, I have gone there rather, and uh, here is a list of the uh, budgets for the uh, few fiscal years. And I want to take a look at the uh, budget for fiscal year 2025. Uh, so yes, we're already uh, talking about budgets for uh, for the next uh, fiscal year or calendar year. Bear with me a second as I uh, try to pull up the correct uh, date range here. And so everyone with the date range uh, set up, uh, what I'm focusing on is the general ledger account for service revenue, as it says here, income services. And right now, uh, this would not be the case in the real world, but as we drill back on the $900 credit amount here, we see such uh, a compilation of nine uh, $100 credit amounts here uh, for the general ledger account that I just spoke of and for the dimension called customer group. In essence, this represents budgeting for small, medium, and large uh, customers of ours, businesses of ours uh, in this uh, demo environment uh, for the 2025 budget. And what I'm trying to say here Everyone is that ultimately what I'm going to do uh, through what I'm going to show is updating of these budget amounts for these specific customer groups. So that's the uh, goal in essence. And as uh, Tony mentioned a few moments ago, it is done uh, through a combination of Microsoft Teams Premium and Microsoft Fabric, or if you want to think of it as Power BI, since that lives in fabric. Now, uh, let me back out of this uh, here. Uh, we'll come back into it in a little bit. Uh, but what I want to say is that think of things with or in this sort of scenario. You're in a Microsoft Teams meeting and ideally with Teams Premium since that provides for you a recap, a full recap, including transcript and art, literally artificial intelligence notes provided for you. Uh, and along with that, whether it is verbally discussed in a meeting, say, with the board of directors, or whether the board of directors in that meeting is sending you through chat a spreadsheet and saying, hey, we need for you to take these figures one way or, one way or another and update your fiscal year, uh, uh, your budget for the next fiscal year, and specifically the second quarter. Uh, and one thing I should have pointed out in the budget a second ago is I was specifically referencing dollar amounts for April through June, second quarter of fiscal year 2025. So my point is, going back to Teams Premium, let's say again, the board of directors uh, is, uh, ha has called the meeting. They say, hey, uh, we need for this amount to be for this customer group for this uh, month of the quarter or whatever or they send a spreadsheet, either or. The bottom line is we can take that information from Microsoft Teams Premium, uh, and ideally, in my case, what uh, I did in my testing is saving it in a Teams channel, and then in Power BI with Fabric, pulling the data from that spreadsheet saved in the Teams channel site, and ultimately review it, uh, to make sure it makes sense and then upload it into Business Central. So again, starting off with a call from the board of directors, a spreadsheet, we save that in Microsoft Teams Premium in a Teams channel site. We go into Power BI, review that data, and then go into Business Central and import that data from Power BI and import it specifically into the budget I showed a little bit ago. 
Now, everyone, this is an example. I'm going to pull it up here on my monitor. This is an example of, say, as it says the title up here, uh, second quarter 2025 budget forecast for uh, the small, medium, and large businesses. These are the amounts that we're going to uh, import into Business Central. So I'm going to minimize this and, for lack of a better phrase, get right to it by going into uh, Power BI. Uh, and I guess, again, Microsoft Fabric is what I should be saying. So I'm going into Microsoft Fabric. We see the uh, Fabric logo in the middle here. And uh, ultimately, the area of Fabric, there are many, many different parts to Fabric, but we're, of course, concentrating on Power BI for today. And I'm certainly not going to go into explaining from even a Power BI standpoint what all these different uh, elements are. Uh, we can definitely do it in another webinar, or if you have questions offline, we can I can explain it that way. But guys, where I'm going to go uh, specifically is my workspace the, in the lower left corner here. Let's click on my workspace. And then what I'm going to do up here at the top um, is click on the new button. Now, in the drop down list that appears when I click the new button, we see several selections. But what I'm going to focus on in the beginning here, at least, is what is called the semantic model. You can think of that as a data set, your data source. So I'm going to click on semantic model. And you, you'll notice all right away there are three buttons available for us to configure our uh, you know, pull our data, whatever data source we have, whether that be for from an Excel spreadsheet a comma delimited file, or if we wanted to kind of copy and paste into a table we'll uh, make right here, kind of make our uh, data source manually. But I'm going to uh, click on the Excel button, and where this is going to take us into, uh, guys, uh, is right here where it says Business Central Budget Forecast. Uh, I, this is where I have saved uh, the spreadsheet that I mentioned into a Teams site. This is uh, Teams we're looking at here. Microsoft Teams is a data source, if you will. Uh, so I'm going to go into the general folder and I'm going to choose the second spreadsheet that is what I was showing earlier. I have it saved in this area and it's called again 2025 Q2. So let's go ahead and select that uh, budget and click on the import button in the lower right corner. In the upper left corner, we can see, uh, rather the upper right uh, corner, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. It shows that we are importing the data. Okay, great. So it has taken us into uh, the area where we can work with our semantic model. Now, there are a couple of ways at actually getting into the data and creating a Power BI report uh, for ourselves because we want to first, before we actually do any importing, guys, we want to review, make sure that the data sent to us by the board of directors may Makes sense. Uh, you know, it's one thing to look at a spreadsheet like we did a little while ago when I had it up here on my monitor, but I don't know. That can be interpreted uh, many different ways. We want to look at it from a visualization standpoint, hence Power BI. Now, there's different ways of getting at the semantic model. If what I'm getting ready to show here doesn't work, I can refresh it and get to it that way. But usually, guys, I go to explore this data and create a blank report. OK, uh, yes, right away that works. So, guys, as I'm moving things around over here on the right, for those of you who are familiar with Power BI and especially the Power BI desktop, this should look very familiar uh, to you. This is the report canvas. This is where I'm going to pull data from our, uh, essentially from what the board of directors sent in Teams Premium, and I'm going to visualize it with a uh, column bar chart and one other element. But let's uh, pull the data first. First things first, always. Uh, let's go ahead and expand this, and I'm going to select customers, or really customer group, uh, and then the dates of the quarter, second quarter that is, and finally the amount. So over here on the, uh, you might say the far left here, I've got uh, a Power BI table, which is created by default. That's the visualization created by default. Uh, and it's not much different, from, frankly, from the spreadsheet, you know, uh, so we really want to visualize it a lot uh, better than that, like in a bar chart or something like that, which we're going to in a few seconds or so. I do want to say that these figures, as you can see here, and as you probably saw in the spreadsheet, they're all negative because whether you import data, uh, revenue based data, i.e., credits uh, into the budget in Business Central, or whether you manually enter them, they should be credits, they should be negative amounts again for any 
uh, accounts and the chart of accounts that represent negative amounts or credits. Uh, revenue. Now, if this were updating the part of the budget for expenses, then these amounts would be positives and not negatives. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make that clear in case anyone wondered uh, wondered that point. Uh, so let me do this, guys. I'm literally going to do Control C on my keyboard here on my uh, laptop and make a copy of that table for good reason. I'll explain in a second. Move this over. And so, as I said, let's visualize this better. Let's uh, do a clustered column chart. Uh, and so I'm uh, over here on the right. You can see where my mouse is under visualizations. I'm going to turn this second table that I just uh, created through copying into a uh, column chart or bar chart. Now, let's make it look a little better. It seems upside down, and that is because of the negative amounts, guys. So let's do this. Back over here on the right, we're going to do format your visual. Click the formatting button here, and I'm going to click on uh, the Y axis, and down here, I'm going to turn on invert range. Okay, good. So now uh, looks uh, looks better uh, in that sense. Now, a few other things we're going to do, however. Let's go back to the data section of the visualization. I want to move a couple of things around here. It's a nice thing about Power BI. You can drag and drop what you need, of course. So I'm going to move date into the um, x-axis, and I'm going to move customers or customer groups, really, into the legend. So, and let me stretch it out again a little bit. So we've got a nice legend legend up here. Uh, the large uh, businesses are blue, medium, purple, and small, kind of reddish orange there. Um, so we've got our figures uh, showing here in the y-axis, the date, meaning each of the three months of the quarter here in the x-axis. And yeah, so far so good. This uh, looks like in terms of what the board sent us through teams. Yeah, this, this looks reasonable. Um, uh, it's obviously going to increase as time goes on uh, uh, in whatever line of business we happen to be in. We'll just say that's normal and just go from there. But you know what, guys? Uh, I'll kidding or whatever aside, I do want to uh, bring in one more object here into this Power BI dashboard, and I'm going to choose the narrative, the AI narrative over here on the right. Click on that guy, and I'll get ready to stretch this out when it finishes um, refreshing and so forth. So yeah, let me do that. There we are. And I like looking at this particular object, this particular... Ugh, excuse me, visualization as well, because it puts into human language what the data all means. It says, uh, it says right here, between Monday of whatever and Saturday of whatever, the small business group had the largest increase. And it even says in a, the second sentence here, uh, across all the customers, Medium had the most interesting recent trend. You know, it's not saying that things went up, things went down, uh, that, you know, it increased by X percent and went down. You know, it's saying it had the most interesting recent trend. And so that is real. That's another good way of making sure that we have thoroughly reviewed what the board has sent us before we import this into Business Central. Now that we have this in place, the semantic model, the data source that I created, and this dashboard from that, I am going to now work towards doing the importing ultimately from Microsoft Fabric or Power BI since we have that data source all constructed here. So let's do this, everyone. I'm going to go back through the tabs up here. I'm going to go back over to Business Central, and I'm going to go back into the GL budgets uh, screen that I was in. And specifically, it'll take a few seconds or so because remember, I got to pull up the proper uh, date range and so forth. Just bear with me a few seconds or so, everyone. Tab out of the field. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the uh, credit of $900 for the revenue, uh, service revenue account, that is. And what we're going to do here, everyone, is we're going to first take advantage of Business Central's edit in Excel capability. We're going to do that by clicking on the share button here in the upper right and choosing, like I said, edit in Excel. And it is, uh, well, dumping the data, of course, into this, the GL budget entries uh, spreadsheet. This may go on to my other monitor here. That's why I'm having to look back and forth. Uh, can be, okay, there it is. Yeah, it did. And let me pull it over to the main monitor so you all can see this, maximize it. So in standard uh, edit in Excel form, <laughs> if you will, you can see where it's pulling, it's pulling out the data connector, the Microsoft Dynamics data connector here in the Excel spreadsheet. 
spreadsheet. Okay, it has re finished refreshing the data. What we see is not really much more than what we already know. Uh, for the quarter, it's got the customer groups, and over here on the right, we see those negative $100. But uh, again, we want to update that, uh, these figures. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do so, and then click the Publish button in the lower right to import ultimately into Business Central. And then we're done. So begs the question, well, how do we get the amounts from Power BI? We're in Excel, for goodness sake. Here's how we do it. Uh, and a lot of you may be familiar with this, but I'm gonna click data, the data menu, and of course, get data. And I'm gonna choose from Power Platform and then from Power BI. And over here on the right, it has brought up another uh, window pane. Uh, so we're going to wait for it to finish thinking, going through the Power BI data sets that we've got over there in Fabric and uh, go from there. And OK, so it's finished. But what I'm going to do is instead of uh, scrolling down and searching for what I need, I'm going to actually type in the search area simply 2025. And there it is. There's a 2025 Q2 budget forecast. I'm going to choose insert table. And it brings up, as you can see here, the create table window. And over here on the right is what we had in Power BI. I'm gonna check uh, customers for customer groups, the date field and the amount field or column. Okay, so we see the data that is over in Power BI. Let's on the lower right corner, let's click the insert table button to get ready to bring that here into our Excel workbook. What this is going to do, everyone, is create a second tab. There it is. It already did it. So uh, here's our first tab that we were looking at. And here's the second tab that just got created thanks to importing the data from Power BI. Uh, so uh, anyway, what I'm going to do first, I'll explain in a few moments why I'm getting ready to sort, but I'm going to uh, sort Z to A here, and then in this uh, second column for the dates, I'm going to sort oldest to newest. What that did ultimately, guys, is that put it in order here of small, medium, and large for each of the three months, and it put the uh, date column in date order. Uh, so we see the three Aprils, the three Mays, the three Junes, et cetera. So now what we're going to do, everybody, is I'm going to copy and paste these amounts from this tab over to our first tab. So let's go ahead and get ready to do it. Hit Control C on the keyboard, go back to the other tab and come here, of course, and then do Control V on my keyboard to paste. And there we go. We've got our amounts uh, filled in. I'm going to close out of the Power BI data sets pane here on the uh, on the right. And as I said a few minutes ago, I'm going to click the uh, publish button to see if we can get this pushed into Business Central. Yes, publish successful workbook updated. So going to go back to Business Central. I'm going to back out of the uh, budget and uh, so forth and uh, maybe go to the role center. OK, and then let me uh, close out of this over here on the right in my downloads folder. So now let's go take a look at the uh, budget. Put in the date range, of course, down here and go from there. Tab out of this field once done. And there we are. We see that it's no longer a credit of $900. It's a credit of $8,450. Let's click on the link. And see, these are the amounts that were in the spreadsheet in Teams Premium that ultimately was housed in the Teams channel site that I mentioned earlier. We reviewed it in Power BI and in, in essence saved it in Power BI in Fabric. And then we imported that data here into Business Central. Mm -hmm.